Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting Blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 243 Winchester and the 223 Remington cartridges. Now, I think that most hunters would agree that the 223 and the 243 are both fantastic cartridges for hunting certain species of game. However, while there is a certain amount of overlap in their capabilities, there are some significant differences between the 243 and the 223 cartridges that you should be aware of. Unfortunately, it is often hard to separate fact from fiction or to determine the true capabilities of a cartridge these days. As you will learn here shortly, both of these cartridges are best suited for different tasks, but they can be adapted to different uses to a certain degree by switching bullet weights and types. So in this episode, I'm going to investigate the 223 versus the 243 debate in detail and then provide some insight into which cartridge is best suited for various situations so you can make an informed decision on which one will work best for you. As usual, we'll start with the history of these two cartridges. Now the story of the 243 and the 223 both really begin with the 308 Winchester. Winchester unveiled the cartridge we now know as the 308 Winchester back in 1952, and the new cartridge quickly developed a reputation for accuracy, power, and efficiency with hunters and shooters. As is the case with many good cartridges, wildcatters and gun designers started modifying the 308 Winchester to develop new and more specialized wildcat cartridges almost immediately after it hit the market. Among others, the 260 Remington, the 7mm 08 Remington, the 338 Federal, and the 358 Winchester are all descended from the 308 Winchester as designers necked the case up or down as necessary to shoot smaller or larger 6.5mm, 7mm, 33 caliber, or 35 caliber bullets, respectively. Now, experiments with necking down the 308 to shoot smaller 6mm or 0.243 inch bullets yielded one of the first cartridges descended from the 308 Winchester in 1955, the 243 Winchester. By necking down the 308 case to shoot smaller caliber bullets, the designers of the 243 Winchester built a cartridge with a higher velocity, flatter trajectory, and less recoil than the 308 Winchester. The new 243 Winchester really caught on with a segment of the hunting population that wanted a flat shooting and light recoiling cartridge that was still powerful enough to cleanly take big game like deer and pronghorn. Capable of shooting heavy as well as light bullets with very good accuracy, the 243 Winchester was also a great varmint hunting cartridge and successfully bridged the gap between traditional varmint cartridges of the day like the 22 Hornet and the 220 Swift on one hand and popular big game hunting cartridges like the 270 Winchester and the 30-06 Springfield on the other. While the 243 was indeed very well designed and a very effective cartridge, there are plenty of good cartridges that don't experience commercial success for one reason or another. Fortunately for the 243 Winchester, Field & Stream editor Warren Page extolled the virtues of the 243 in his columns. Similar to what Jack O'Connor did for the 270 Winchester at Outdoor Life, Page's columns almost certainly helped drive demand for the 243 Winchester. However, the 243 also got something of an unintended assist from Remington when they released the competing 244 Remington the same year Winchester released the 243. Designed by necking down a 257 Roberts case, itself a neck down 7mm Mauser to 243 caliber, the 244 Remington had a small ballistic advantage over the 243 Winchester. However, the folks at Big Green made the unfortunate initial decision to use a slower 1 and 12 inch rifling twist in their 244 Remington rifles. Those rifles performed very well with lighter bullets for use on smaller predators and varmints like coyotes, but they were unable to stabilize the longer 100 grain bullets that were best suited for use on bigger game like deer and antelope. Since Winchester produced their 243 rifles with a faster twist rate of 1 in 10 inches instead of 1 in 12 like Remington did, they could accurately shoot heavier bullets in addition to lighter bullets and thus were more versatile than the 244 Remington initially. 
Remington renamed the 244 the 6mm Remington a few years later and started producing rifles with a 1 in 9 inch twist rate. But the damage had already been done and the 243 Winchester was already well established and had claimed the majority of the 6mm centerfire rifle market share. Now the 244-6mm Remington was not a big commercial success for the company. But Remington did much better with another cartridge they also developed in the 1950s. The U.S. military began searching for a replacement for the relatively new M14 rifle in the 7.62 by 51 mm cartridge during the 1950s. They eventually settled on the M16 rifle in the high velocity 5.56 by 45 mm cartridge, which was derived from the 222 Remington. Remington saw the potential for a tremendous commercial opportunity and developed a civilian version of the new cartridge that was extremely similar but not identical to the 5.56 NATO cartridge. Formerly standardized with SAMI as the 223 Remington in the early 1960s, the new cartridge was capable of firing a 55 grain bullet at muzzle velocities approaching 3,300 feet per second. The 5.56 by 45 mm NATO cartridge had very similar ballistics in the original 5.56 by 45 mm M193 ball load fired a 224 caliber 55 grain full metal jacket bullet at 3,250 feet per second. Now unfortunately the 5.56 NATO cartridge and the M16 rifle got off to a very rough start in the service with the US Army and Marine Corps in Vietnam. Modifications to the rifle and ammo solved most of the reliability problems that really plagued the system during the war. Large numbers of people in the U.S. military still had serious concerns regarding the stopping power of the little cartridge, though. This was especially true with the new M855 load adopted with the M16A2 rifle. Incorporating a new bullet design with a steel penetrator, the M855 load fired a 62-grain full metal jacket bullet at 3,025 feet per second. Now the M855 penetrates better than the M193, but complaints about the terminal performance of the 5.56 millimeter cartridge from soldiers grew even louder after the new ball load saw use in combat in the 1990s and the early 2000s. Now civilian hunters who adopted the AR-15 and the 223 Remington cartridge during the last couple decades of the 20th century shared many of those concerns. The rifle and cartridge worked extremely well for predator and varmint hunting as well as target shooting, but the 223 Remington also developed a reputation for unsatisfactory performance on bigger game like deer. With all that said, the 223 Remington remains one of the most popular cartridges in North America today. In terms of ammo sales, it's probably the single most popular centerfire rifle cartridge in the U.S. The cartridge is extremely popular among those who enjoy shooting the AR platform as well as predator and varmint hunters. It's also very common with recreational shooters, ranging from those who just enjoy casual plinking to more serious competitive shooting. Additionally, while it's still on the light side for that sort of work, advances in bullet technology have made the 223 Remington much more effective on deer-sized game today than was the case even 10 to 20 years ago. All right, now let's talk about the relative sizes of the 243 and the 223 Remington. So first, the 223 Remington is physically quite a bit smaller than the 243 Winchester. The 243 Winchester has a longer overall length and uses a longer case length than the 223 Remington. The Winchester cartridge has an overall length of 2.71 inches and uses a case 2.045 inches long. The 223 Remington has an overall length of 2.26 inches and uses a 1.76 inch long case. That said, the 223 Remington is designed for use in an AR-15, which can only accommodate cartridges up to 2.26 inches long. So the 223 is the maximum size cartridge that will fit in an AR-15. The longer 243 Winchester is too long for the AR-15 and requires the use of a physically larger AR-10 platform if you're going to be using it in some sort of an AR. More on this in a minute. Both cartridges are commonly found in short-action bolt-action rifles, though. 
the 243 has a larger rim diameter than the 223 Remington as well at 0.473 inches versus 0.378 inches. So for all those reasons, the 243 Winchester has quite a bit more case capacity than the 223 Remington and can use a lot more powder. Bullet size is another one of the important differences between the two cartridges. The 243 Winchester uses .243 inch diameter bullets, while the 223 Remington uses smaller .224 inch bullets. The 223 Remington is capable of using bullets in the 35 to 77 grain range, and of these, 55 grain and 62 grain bullets are by far the most common. On the other hand, the vast majority of 243 Winchester factory loads shoot bullets in the 55 to 115 grain range, with 55, 87, 90, and 100 grain bullets being the most common. And finally, the 243 Winchester is also loaded to a higher pressure than the 223 Remington, with 60,000 psi for the 243 Winchester versus 55,000 psi for the 223. Now, as you can probably imagine, the differences in the external dimensions of these cartridges also translate into some important differences in their ballistic performance. This is illustrated when you compare Hornady Superformance Varmint, Nosler Varmageddon, and Winchester Deer Season XP factory ammunition. When comparing these lines, the 223 Remington loads use a 35 grain NTX with a .177 BC. 55 grain Nosler Varmageddon bullets with a .255 BC and 64 grain Winchester Extreme Point bullets with a .282 BC. The 243 Winchester loads within those lines use 58 grain Hornady VMAX bullets with a .250 BC, 70 grain Nosler Varmageddon bullets with a .305 BC, and 95 grain Winchester Extreme Point bullets with a .363 BC. The Hornady loads use light for caliber varmint bullets fired at a very high velocity for each cartridge. The Nosler loads use mid-weight varmint bullets for each one, and the Winchester loads use heavy for caliber bullets designed for deer hunting. This allows us to conduct as close to an apples to apples comparison as is possible for both cartridges for varmint and deer hunting applications. Now when you compare those loads, that lightweight 58 grain 243 Winchester load has by far the flattest trajectory of the group and it has about 10 inches less bullet drop at 500 yards than the flattest shooting 223 Remington load. That 58 grain load also has a muzzle velocity over 800 feet per second faster than the 55 grain 223 Remington load and uses a heavier and more aerodynamic bullet than the slightly faster 35 grain 223 Remington load from the Hornady line. By the same token, the 243 Winchester is also capable of firing a 95 grain bullet as fast or faster than the 223 can fire a 55 grain or a 64 grain bullet. Now that particular deer season XP load has 56 to 72 percent more muzzle energy than the various 223 Remington loads. And since it uses a more aerodynamic bullet, that edge in kinetic energy grows as range increases. That 243 Winchester load drops below 1,000 foot-pounds of energy just shy of 400 yards, but it still has more than double the retained kinetic energy of the most powerful 223 load. The results are similar when you compare how much a 10 mile an hour crosswind impacts those same 223 Remington and 243 Winchester loads out to 500 yards. Now this is another area where the 243 Winchester shines and the cartridge has a significant advantage over the 223 Remington at all ranges in terms of wind drift. This is because the cartridge uses heavier and generally more aerodynamic bullets than the 223 Remington. Now while the 223 Remington is considered a high velocity cartridge, it's also often loaded with lighter bullets with a fairly low BC that don't retain energy or resist wind deflection very well. Alright, now let's talk about recoil. To do this, I compared hand loads that approximate the performance of the Winchester factory loads firing 64 grain and 95 grain bullets from the 223 Remington and the 243 Winchester when fired from identical 7 pound rifles. Now felt recoil will vary from shooter to shooter and rifle to rifle, but free recoil energy is still a useful way to compare cartridges. Now while the 243 Winchester really shined with trajectory and wind drift, this is where the 223 Remington really does well, and it has significantly less recoil than the 243. 
In fact, the 243 Winchester has approximately 67% more recoil when comparing these two loads. That's really saying something too because the 243 Winchester is a very mild recoiling cartridge itself. Now all things considered, most hunters should be able to handle the recoil from the 243 Winchester without much trouble at all. The 223 Remington just has an extremely mild, almost non-existent recoil. So the 223 Remington has a big advantage in this respect, especially for smaller or more recoil shy hunters. Now some people do handle recoil better than others, but all other things being equal, they will absolutely shoot more accurately with a milder recoiling cartridge. And having a really mild recoil, as is the case with the 223 Remington in this case, really helps with spotting your impacts and making a fast follow-up shot. But that said, the 243 Winchester, in the case of a rifle that uh, really fits the shooter well and, and all of that stuff, it also does well in those areas too, just not quite as good as the 223. Now what about accuracy? Now the 223 Remington in particular has seen extensive use in the hands of competition shooters and it does have an outstanding reputation in that area. However, the 243 Winchester also excels in that area and, if we're being honest, both cartridges are capable of absolutely tack driving accuracy in the right hands. Though the exceptionally mild recoil of the 223 does give that cartridge an advantage at short range, say 200 yards or less, the 243 Winchester has a longer effective range and a bigger advantage at ranges past 200 yards because those heavier and more aerodynamic bullets retain more energy and are less susceptible to wind drift than the 223 Remington. So this is a case where the ballistics of the cartridge can help maximize the advantages of the shooter and help them deal with environmental conditions a little bit easier than the 223 Remington. Now there are also a couple of other factors that are worth considering. So first, the 243 Winchester uses larger diameter bullets than the 223 Remington. Specifically, the larger diameter 243 caliber bullets used by that cartridge have about 18% more frontal surface area, also known as cross-sectional area, than the 224 caliber bullets used by the 223 Remington. So all other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss in a hunting situation. Now this is a small though definite advantage in favor of the 243 Winchester, especially on bigger game. Now when you combine that with the fact that the 243 Winchester carries more kinetic energy downrange, those larger diameter bullets can be really helpful when hunting bigger game like deer. Now at the same time, the bullets used by the 243 Winchester usually have a higher ballistic coefficient than those used by the 223 Remington. The 6mm bore diameter is in something of that sweet spot where it is easier to manufacture very high BC bullets that aren't especially heavy, like the Hornady ELD Match or the ELD X. Those aerodynamic projectiles don't slow down as fast and they are more resistant to wind drift. That's not a hard and fast rule. For instance, the 55 grain 224 caliber VMAX has a 0.255 BC versus the 0.250 BC of the 58 grain 243 caliber VMAX. However, it is generally the case that 243 caliber bullets in the most common weights will be more aerodynamic than otherwise identical 224 caliber bullets in the most common bullet weights. Now at the same time, the 243 Winchester also has an edge over the 223 Remington in bullet sectional density. Sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things being equal, a heavier projectile of a given caliber will be longer and have a higher sectional density and penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. As an example, 58 grain, 87 grain, and 100 grain .243 caliber bullets have sectional densities of .140, zero, .210, and .242 respectively. This compares favorably to 55 grain, 62 grain, and 77 grain .224 caliber bullets, which have sectional densities of .157, .177, and .219 respectively. While there is a little bit of overlap in sectional density with those two cartridges, the heavier .243 caliber bullets intended for use on bigger game, where bullet penetration is more important, far outclass those used by the 223 Remington. 
All things considered, the 243 Winchester is simply a significantly more powerful cartridge. It is not a heavy hitter on the level of cartridges like the 7mm Rim Mag or the 300 Win Mag, but it is still in a completely different league from the 223 Remington and the 556 NATO, but that should not be surprising considering how much bigger it is than those cartridges and that it is descended from the 308 Winchester. All right, let's talk quickly about barrel life. Neither cartridge is known for being especially hard on barrels. However, the 243 Winchester will probably burn out a given barrel a little faster than the 223 Remington because it uses so much more powder. Exactly how fast that occurs depends on a number of factors like the quality of the barrel, the exact ammo used, etc. For serious target shooters, this can be a concern. Now the good news for hunters is that typical barrel life for even the 243 Winchester is more than enough to last for many years of hunting with no issues. Exactly when the barrel becomes unusable depends on the rifle as well as the hunter in question and what sort of performance they expect from their rifle. Those who want extremely tight groups for long range shooting are probably going to want to change their barrel out sooner than those with a little bit lower standards. Now, all other things being equal, the 223 Remington will probably have a longer barrel life than the 243 Winchester, but the difference is probably not big enough for the average hunter to worry about unless they are putting a, a lot of rounds downrange. So where do we stand with each cartridge? The 243 Winchester fires a larger diameter, heavier, and more aerodynamic bullet at a faster velocity than the 223 Remington. Therefore, the 243 Winchester will have more recoil, a much flatter trajectory, more resistance to wind drift, and carry more kinetic energy downrange than the 223 Remington. Okay, let's talk about ammunition availability for both cartridges. Now, both the 243 and the 223 are extremely popular among hunters and shooters all over the world. Indeed, both are also likely in the top 10 most popular centerfire rifle cartridges in the USA. However, the 223 Remington is by far the most widely used of the two and is typically the most popular centerfire rifle cartridge in the US in terms of raw ammo sales. Now, while it is often very easy to find a variety of ammo for both cartridges during normal times, ammo is usually easier to find than the 223. In general, 223 Remington ammo is typically the least expensive of the two as well. The difference between the two cartridges has become even more apparent during the 2020 to 2022 ammo shortage, and 223 Remington ammo is generally much easier to find and more reasonably priced than ammo for the 243 Winchester. Now, just about every ammunition manufacturer produces several different loads of 223 Remington and 5.56 NATO ammunition. This ammo ranges from match grade and surplus full metal jacket ammo best suited for work at the range on one end of the spectrum to hollow point, soft point, and ballistic tip ammo designed for hunting and personal protection on the other end. Now note that full metal jacket ammo is generally not legal for hunting in most states. So while that military surplus 5.56 ammo is great for use at the range, I don't recommend taking it afield in search of game. Now most 223 and 556 ammo is designed for target shooting or plinking, but companies like Barnes, Federal Premium, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, and Winchester all produce ammunition in those chamberings suitable for hunting. Most of this is varmint hunting ammo like Hornady's Varmint Express and Superformance Varmint lines, Nosler's Varmageddon line, and Winchester's Varmint X line. However, there are also a handful of 223 Remington ammo options specifically designed and marketed for big game hunting as well. For instance, there are both 223 and 556 loads in the Barnes Vortex line. Federal offers 223 Remington ammo in their Fusion line. Nosler offers 223 ammo in their E-Tip line. And Winchester produces 223 Remington ammo in their Deer Season XP, Power Max Bonded, and Super X lines. Now, on the other hand, 243 Winchester ammo tends to be more common in ammo lines designed for deer hunting. The big ammunition manufacturers like Barnes, Browning, Federal, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, Sierra, Swift, and Winchester all produce a large variety of quality 243 Winchester factory ammunition suitable for hunting most species. In each case, there is normally a good selection of bullet types and weights for each cartridge suitable for big game hunting. 
That said, Predator and Varmint rounds like the Hornady VMAX and the Nasser Varmageddon are also available for the 243. So while ammo for both cartridges is available for both big game and varmint hunters, the 243 Winchester is more common for big game hunters with some availability for varmint hunters and then the opposite is true for the 223 Remington. Now hand loaders will appreciate the fact that reloading components for both cartridges are widely available and there is an excellent variety of bullet choices for each cartridge. So you should not have any trouble working up a good custom load for either one if you like the hand load. All right, let's talk about rifle availability. Once again, the 223 Remington is more common than the 243 Winchester, but there's a really good selection of rifles in both cartridges. Now remember, a rifle with a 5.56 NATO chamber can usually safely and accurately fire 223 Remington ammunition, but the reverse is not always true. So many, but not all, gun manufacturers chamber their rifles in 5.56 NATO so their customers have more flexibility with ammo. Now the 223 tends to be more common in bolt action rifles like the Browning X-Bolt, Ruger American, Remington 700, and Winchester XPR. The 5.56 NATO is an extremely popular chambering for AR-15 style rifles like those made by Bushmaster, Noveski, Smith & Wesson, Sig Sauer, and Wilson Combat. It's also available in other semi-auto sporting rifles like the Ruger Mini-14. That is not a hard and fast rule though and it is not unusual to find bolt-action 5.56 rifles. For instance, the lightweight CZ-527 and the Ruger American Ranch bolt-action rifles are both available in 5.56 NATO. On the other hand, the 243 Winchester is extremely common in bolt-action rifles. In fact, just about every really popular bolt-action hunting rifle in current production is available in 243. So for instance, it's available in several different versions of the Remington Model 700 and the Winchester Model 70. The same goes for the Browning X-Bolt, Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Nosler M48, Remington Model 7, Ruger American, Ruger Hawkeye, Savage Axis, Savage 110, the Tika T3, Weatherby Vanguard, and the Winchester XPR. Now while the 243 Winchester is most common in bolt action rifles, it's also available in a few different semi-auto rifles like the Browning Automatic Rifle or the BAR. Some companies like Wilson Combat and Remington with the R25 have also manufactured the AR-10 in 243 Winchester over the years as well. That said, that chambering was nowhere near as popular as the 308 Winchester in the AR-10. Now both cartridges are also available in lever action rifles. For instance, the Winchester Model 88 lever action was one of the original rifles available for the 243, the Winchester Model 70 being the other. Additionally, the Henry Long Ranger and the Browning lever action rifle, or the BLR, are currently manufactured in both 223 and 243. So you can probably find a good rifle available in either cartridge regardless of the action type you prefer. Okay, so which one is right for you, the 243 or the 223? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game like white-tailed deer, feral hogs, or black bear at ranges inside 200 yards? Both will work on deer-sized game if you do your part. However, the 243 Winchester is significantly more powerful, and I do strongly recommend using it for hunting deer instead of the 223. Heck, a 243 shooting 100 grain bullets is a very effective deer load with a long history of success afield. Now the 223 Remington will work on deer with good bullet selection, like the Winchester Deer Season XP, Winchester Power Max Bonded, or a Barnes load, and with good shot placement. It's definitely on the light side though, and it has a much shorter effective range on deer than the 243. You will also have much less of a margin for error with your shot placement and you should be prepared for a potentially longer and more difficult to follow tracking job with the 223 as well. So yeah, it will work, but keep those caveats in mind. Now, are you looking for a cartridge to hunt predators, varmints, and small game animals like prairie dogs with? The 243 Winchester will work really well in this role, and lots of people use it for predator hunting due to the extremely flat trajectory and hard-hitting characteristics of the cartridge. However, I think the 223 Remington is the better choice here because it does still have a relatively flat trajectory, ammo's cheaper, and there are many types of 223 ammo that are specifically designed for predator and varmint hunting. 
Additionally, the 223 Remington is extremely common in AR-15 pattern rifles, which are great for those who want the ability to take an extremely rapid follow-up shot, say in case you miss or in case you have multiple animals coming in at once like several coyotes. Now the 223 Remington is a very effective coyote cartridge, but there is a little bit greater chance of wounded and lost animals when using it compared to the 243. This is not as big of an issue with the 223 as it is with smaller cartridges, but it is something to keep in mind. So hunters who want to minimize this issue as much as possible, like participants in a coyote hunting contest, should use the 243 Winchester. The downside of the 243 Winchester is that fur damage will likely be a bigger problem. So this is an area where you just need to really sit down and think about what your priorities are and then pick the one that works best for you because the predator slash varmint hunting realm encompasses a really big spectrum of performance from prairie dogs on one hand to coyotes and bobcats on the other. Some people care about the, uh, saving the fur of the animal, some people don't. So like I said, think about this stuff, pick the one that works best for you. Now, are you looking for the cartridge that is better suited for longer range hunting for game like mule deer or pronghorn antelope in open country where you might need to take a shot at longer range? The 243 Winchester is definitely the way to go here between these two cartridges. Be very careful trying to shoot game at longer distances with this round though. People do it all the time with a lot of success, but bullet weight and type are both very important here. I personally would not shoot past 300 yards on a deer or pronghorn with a typical 243 hunting bullet, but I could potentially see extending that to 350 or maybe 400 yards under the right conditions with a load using a really high BC bullet, like that Hornady ELDX. It all depends on the conditions and the skill of the shooter though. If we're being honest, most people don't have any business shooting at game past 300 yards with a 243 at all, regardless of the bullet. But once again, it is still in a completely different level of performance than the 223 Remington for this sort of a hunting situation. Now, do you want a hunting cartridge that is well suited for bigger game like caribou, moose, elk, elan, kudu, or red stag? I personally would not recommend hunting game like elk or moose with either cartridge. Yeah, some people do have success each year, but I think that is asking for trouble. If you have nothing else, then yes, the 243 Winchester will definitely work. Use heavy for caliber controlled expansion bullets, like a 100 grain Nossler partition for instance. Keep your shooting distances short, like under 100 yards. Only shoot broadside or very slightly quartering angles, and be extremely careful with your shot placement. But if it were me, I would suggest going with something bigger if you want to be hunting bigger game. Now, do you want a cartridge suitable for self or home defense? Both will certainly work in this regard, but I'd go with the 223 Remington here, mainly due to rifle selection. In practical terms, an AR-15 and 223 Remington is an easier to find rifle that is likely smaller and easier to handle in close quarters than an AR-10 or a bolt-action rifle in 243 Winchester, even if the 243 is more powerful. Now, are you sensitive to recoil and you need a really low recoil cartridge? Both are very mild recoiling cartridges, but the 223 Remington has a big edge over the 243 Winchester here. It really depends on what you're trying to do though. The 223 Remington would be my recommendation for casual shooting at the range or predator hunting. Now the 223 Remington is a great choice as a centerfire rifle cartridge for a completely brand new shooter to start out with as well. Now even for a newer and or a really recoil shy hunter, the 243 Winchester is probably a better choice overall for deer hunting since it has a longer effective range and gives the hunter a little bit more room for error compared to the 223. The 243 Winchester is also available in Hornady's custom light line of ammo that recoils even less than typical 243 Winchester hunting ammo. And even the regular 243 Winchester hunting ammo is still generally very mild recoiling as well. Now, as I've stated before, the 223 Remington and the 243 Winchester are both very solid rifle cartridges. However, since the difference between them is pretty big in certain respects, each cartridge is better suited to specific situations than the other. So carefully evaluate your needs as a hunter based upon the circumstances you foresee using the cartridge in, get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge you select, 
learn to shoot it well, use quality bullets, and it should serve you well afield. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click that red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for, click on the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to you. Which one do you prefer? The 223 Remington or the 243 Winchester? What game have you successfully taken with each one? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.